lights are off and the heat is on as Dark Sector finally hits store shelves. First announced in 2004, this suitably shadowy third-person shooter has been hard at work forging its identity and getting ready to go up against the giants in the genre. But even with the spreading viral mutation and a wicked-looking disc of death, Dark Sector is in for a tough fight. CIA agent Hayden Tenno has been sent into the heart of eastern Euro hellhole Lazria, where there's a rogue agent to be eliminated and a deadly bio-plague turning the populace into mutated freak beasts. After putting a bullet in his target, things take a turn for the worse as he's infected with the same bug that's destabilized the country. The storytelling is nothing special, with short cutscenes breaking up the huge action sequences. A few generic notes are offset by a few surprises, and in the end it meets basic expectations. Dark Sector has enough of an identity to be considered an original title, but there's no denying there are a few clear influences. The gunplay, crate busting, and black market merchant all scream Resident Evil 4, while the heavy feel the character movement and cover system feels very Gears of War. You do have a bladed boomerang, the glaive, that grows out of your hand. You can even steer it in slow motion into body parts of enemies using the six axis controls on the PlayStation 3. Kinda like the arrows in Heavenly Sword. You'll find numerous ways to off the opposition. The game is focused on the single player experience broken up into 10 chapters. You shoot and glaive your way through heavy opposition, sometimes taking a break to beat up on your environment using the glaive's ability to absorb fire, ice, and electricity. Larger enemies like plus-size mutants and soldiers in mechanized suits fill the boss and mini-boss roles with varying degrees of success. Hayden grows more powerful as the game progresses, and he'll find money to spend on weapons at the black market and snag metallic cases which hold weapon upgrades you can apply using a very basic power-up system. On the other hand, or the other arm, your infection gradually spreads, giving you access to new abilities which help you survive against increasingly angry biofreaks. One of the first is the power throw, which, with the proper timing, makes your glaive both deadlier and more satisfying to use. Dark Sector also features a multiplayer component that pits man against a mutant. With limited map selection and only two modes, it's clear that multiplayer isn't the primary focus. It doesn't quite have the depth or balance to give it long-term legs, but it's good enough to help bolster the 10-hour single-player experience. The first mode puts everyone up against one super-powered mutant player. Take out the threat, and the powers are yours when the hunt is on again next round. Unfortunately, too many players can easily wreck the fun. The other mode is better, pitting two evenly matched squads against each other, with one randomly selected super mutant VIP per side, and more than one guy for you to kill. Neither mode will become an unhealthy addiction, but they're a decent bonus to a game of average length and value. <laughs> Before he had an infected arm and mutant superpowers, Hayden Tenno killed guys with guns. Now he has a bladed weapon growing out of his hand, so he uses that too. Dark Sector is a level-by-level -level gauntlet of enemies and doors leading to more enemies. The assault never lets up, and the correct way to proceed always involves taking out every last person or thing standing in your way. There are a few puzzles that have you charge your glaive with the appropriate power to shock, burn, or freeze your way through obstacles, and a couple of vehicle sections where you'll control a walking tank but the level of variety is pretty low. Fortunately, multiple ways of mutilating your enemies will keep you entertained. You can use the glaive in conjunction with a handheld weapon like a pistol, but if you're unloading on enemies with a two-handed gun like a shotgun or assault rifle and have the urge to play Death Frisbee, you'll have to wait a couple of seconds for the switch. You can also use the glaive to grab an enemy's gun, although the gun will realize you're infected and lock up after a short time. Still, the ability to borrow a gun is a nice touch. You also have access to a close quarters attack, which is disappointingly weak unless you've already weakened an opponent, in which case you can perform a brutal finisher. Still, you'll have no choice but to take on bad guys at range. You'll often find yourself just far enough away that your glaive won't reach, and since you rarely get a chance to swap out your weapons, you can carry one handheld and one bigger weapon at any time, you can find yourself with limited options. Getting close becomes a viable option later in the game, when you have access to a bubble shield and several seconds of inviso power for stealthy movement, which lets you move to a new position and allows for burly surprise kills. 
One of your last mutations lets you charge your glaive with energy and then blow it up for an area attack. It takes a while for the gameplay to open up, and because of your character's overall slow speed and deliberate turning, it can take a while to get into the swing of combat. Once you do, though, the combat can definitely be rewarding. Just hope you don't run into too many glitches. We certainly did. Most of the time, Dark Sector looks good and sounds great. The environmental effects and character models are impressive, and while the dark and gritty environments aren't completely original, they do look very, very good. The sound design on the game is also good, with solid sound effects for headshots that make the combat feel visceral and maybe a little sickening. The dialogue isn't quite on the level of the actor delivering it, Smallville's Michael Rosenbaum, but it does a good job. I've been infected. Shot you gave me, it's not working! Unfortunately, a few technical hitches make a noticeable impact. Enemies can get stuck in place or clip through walls, objects will occasionally hang in the air, and every once in a while, it can be painfully obvious that things aren't going according to plan. Dark Sector goes for gore and glory, but does better spattering blood than it does applying polish. Despite a number of original elements and a fairly solid gameplay core, the game isn't able to add substantially to the formula and mechanics it's borrowed from other games in the genre. You could call Dark Sector just another shooter with a few annoying technical issues, and though it doesn't qualify as a must-play, you'll be rewarded for shining some light into its dark world.